Hey guys, Florian from Optolens here. So a few weeks ago I've made a purchase that surprised me a little bit. I decided to buy the BMPCC, the old, the original pocket. And that doesn't really make a lot of sense in 2020, I guess, um, when I own a camera like the BMPCC 6K and the newly announced R5 as well will be released soon. Also, to be honest with you, this is the only purchase that my wife did not um, agree with. Uh, it doesn't make sense financially or for content, but I just wanted to make a video about why I decided to, to do this. So let's jump into it. So the reason number one is that it's a camera, it's gear, and it's a camera that matters. So I've always loved cameras. I've had cameras when I was a kid. Uh, my 20th birthday present was the first DSLR that I owned. My wife bought me a film camera, a 35mm camera for my birthday. And I've also kept my grandmother's film camera from the 40s and 50s. I still remember the day that I made the decision to buy my old original pocket in 2013. I think I was at Macca's or McDonald's. Um, on a parking lot and I was going through the website, Blackmagic's website, and I was really impressed by the way that they presented that camera and what it offered. And at the time I had a 5D3 and that I had bought I think a year before that and I was my main video camera. So when I sold my original BMPCC to get the 4K version, I felt quite bad. Um, I didn't want to, but I had to. I couldn't justify um, financially or just to have two cameras. Uh, that were doing videos only since I do stills as well. So I sold it to fund the BMPCC 4K. Buying it back has been on my mind for quite some time. Um, I've been online to see if there were some sales on and I even watched some videos of people buying it again. I remember watching a video by Mambo, uh, which uh, he's a filmmaker that I really admire. And he was on the verge of buying one as well. I think he was just looking online and decided not to for good reasons and those reasons made sense for me as well and I was like maybe maybe I shouldn't it doesn't make sense uh, maybe I'm just being silly and I shouldn't I shouldn't get one so I kind of forgot about it and I made up my mind and I was like okay I'm not gonna get it um, but one day I was on broadcast gear for sale and which is a Facebook group where people buy and sell gear and I saw a pocket that was on sale and looked exactly like mine obviously they all look the same but I kind of recognized the name from the person that was selling it Obviously, it was selling the same pocket that I sold to him, so it was actually mine. Um, and I was like, not that I believe in anything, but I was like, this is actually my own, the one that I used for years. Um, maybe I should buy it, maybe it's a sign. So I reached out to him um, and I bought it. So the reason number two I decided to get this is that I built my work, my portfolio, my career with this camera. So pretty much everything that I shot between 2013 and 2018, mid 2018, was shot using this camera, apart from a few docos where I was using the C100 Mark II. So for me, it kind of makes sense to own that camera because it reminds me of how far I've come um, and how I evolved as a filmmaker. Half of my reel pretty much is using this camera. So all the images that you see um, were shot on the original pocket. So I've posted over the last few months videos of my early travels, so New York, Rome, Tokyo, um, and they were all shot using this one. So now the third reason, um, and I think it's probably the most important, is the look of the image and the shooting experience. So I think we can all agree that the image coming out of this camera is amazing, it's organic, uh, it's, dare I say, cinematic. And it's hard to beat for the price or the form factor and I think a lot of people are trying to go back to this kind of image now and you can have it in camera with this one. I love the Super 16 sensor and I just love how grainy and soft the image looks. I find it very pleasing and it suits me. Um, it kind of makes me laugh now these days when people complain that oh it doesn't have a tilt screen, the battery is poor, it doesn't have in body stabilization. Um, but you can add a $20 top plate by small rig like I did and you can be good for like a few hours. I compare shooting with this camera to 35mm photography. I find that I take my time to take the shots because there's not as much battery so you need to make them count. And there's no slow motion to hide average shots. There's no stabilization and 
I don't know, I feel like it's just a more in the moment experience. Obviously it's missing the bells and whistles from cameras these days, but you still have 13 stops of dynamic range. Um, you still have, like I said, the amazing image. You also have the codex, you can shoot RAW, you can shoot um, ProRes. There's a reason why I was shooting with it from 2013 to 2018, because I couldn't find anything else that would work better than this one. And the only time I changed was when I decided to get the 4K. And there's a reason why people like the look of Super 16, Super 35, that they like the look of film photography is because it has a certain quality and aesthetic that you, even with digital sensors, even if you work on them, grade them, it's just not the same. You can emulate, but you can't really replicate the same look, um, even when it comes to depth of field, when it comes to just pure image quality out of the box. Um, I love the camera for travel, I love the camera for personal content. That's where this camera shines, you know, it's it's definitely not perfect, but when it comes to image and look, um, it's very, very hard to beat. So the fourth reason is emotional value. Um, this is probably the most important camera for me. It made me a better shooter. I learned a lot from it, shooting everything manual, having a video only camera and it's also the camera that I've taken on so many trips with my wife you know the, we spent Christmas in New York we went to Iceland Greenland that's the camera that I had when we moved to New Zealand for a few months so it makes sense for me to own this camera just based on it being a memory pretty much the same way that you would keep uh, an old backpack or that you would keep old photos it's just something that means something to me and it doesn't really matter um, the price or the use of it I just want to have it because it brings back so many memories and so many like good feelings that you can't really put a price on it so obviously if someone was coming to me and were asking what was the best camera to get to start as a filmmaker that's probably not the camera that I would recommend. I would recommend the BMPCC 4K or the OSR or any camera like that because obviously it's not the best camera to shoot with. It's kind of temperamental, it's fiddly to use and the screen you can't really see much. But you know when you compare, when you really compare, forgetting about resolution, um, when you compare this camera to a lot of other cameras even today, this one still is a really good bang for buck. Uh, you get ProRes, you get RAW, you get amazing creamy uh, organic image and when you add a battery plate like this one, I think it's like 20 bucks from small rig, I can link um, in the description if you want to, if you want to check it out, a cage like this for like 30 bucks and you add a zoom like this one which is a 14 to 42 for like 100 bucks, uh, you've got a package with the camera that's like probably like four to five hundred dollars and that gives you a lot. I know a lot of people as well that use this as a B-cam for their BMBCC 4K, 6K, just to get that same color science with um, a different look, obviously. But Super 16 mil look is a look that's really um, sought after. Uh, a lot of people are trying to go back to that kind of image. Maybe people are getting sick of super, super clear digital image. Um, I don't have a preference when it comes to um, old or new, I feel like you should use the camera or the lenses that match the project that you're working on. But to me, owning so many different cameras, um, it makes sense to, to own this one because that's the one that started um, everything. I wouldn't be doing what I do today, maybe not to the same extent if I didn't start with this one. I think if you start with a camera that has autofocus, amazing low light performance, that has pretty much everything that works straight away. Um, it doesn't really force you to try new things and you kind of get really comfortable straight away. So having this, it's going back to the basics. Obviously, if someone hires me for a shoot, uh, it's very unlikely that I will be shooting on this one. I would pick the 6K or the USR or the 4K any day. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't consider this. Obviously, when you have cameras that the US R5 that are released now, when you have 8K, raw dual pixel focus um, it's really hard to justify anything like this um, but not everything is about resolution slow motion and tilted screen it, i think to me it's the same way that if you were telling someone not to shoot film 
a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows, a lot of short films are shot on film, and there are cameras and system that were, you know, like built 20, 30 years ago. And there's nothing wrong about it. It just fits the project and it just has an image that people want to have. And that's fine. I think just people these days are getting a bit too picky about specs. Uh, you wouldn't believe the amount of time that I got told in 2017 or 18 when I was still shooting with this. Why do you shoot this? Don't you want to shoot 4K? Don't you want like 60p, 120? Don't you want to shoot like fancy cinematic B-roll? Whatever. You know, like shoot whatever you want to do. And to be honest with you, I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to be shooting with it. When I look at my Pocket 6K or my EOS R, I look at them as work cameras. And it kind of feels good to buy something because I want to rather than need to. I buy so much gear for work, for job. Um, I spend sometimes the same amount of money that I spend on this, which is like roughly $300 USD on a SSD or on a piece of metal. And even now when I share videos where I've used this camera, the response is always good. You know, like there's just something so special about this, um, this image. Here you go guys, so these are the reasons why I decided to get this. This is not like a clean bag video, I didn't purchase a camera just to make videos about it. Um, this is a genuine purchase, um, I really wanted to, to do this, I really wanted to buy this again because it means so much to me. And I'm sure you guys all have cameras that mean something to you. Obviously, um, there are cameras and cameras, you know, like I wouldn't really talk about my old uh, you know, D500 or cameras like that, even though I still have them. So anyway, that's why I wanted to make this video and to let you guys know what I did that I decided to buy the same one again. Um, I think that's the first time ever that I purchased the same item twice. That's it for me guys, so thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm really curious to see if you guys have cameras like this that you want to keep or are keeping just for sentimental value. Um, I'm really curious about this, so let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.